KTM's two-stroke EFI. How it evolved. Between the early 1990s and 2017, KTM two-stroke engine platform didn't change much. Sure, there were refinements and some landmark changes, such as the switch to the hydraulic clutch in 1997, the addition of the electric start in 2008, the all-new two-stroke engine in 2017, which was fitted with a counterbalancer for the first time. But the introduction the transfer port injection TPI, fuel injection system to the 2018 250EXC and 300EXC is arguably the most significant change ever made to KTM's two-strokes models. Austrian manufacturer took en route to the introduction of the world's first fuel injection production off-road motorcycle. Technology that allowed KTM to meet the new EU R04 regulations and still retain their ready-to-race performance. It's an air-assisted fuel injection system. The air and fuel was mixed in a pre-chamber and then, under high pressure, injected into the combustion chamber directly. The project kicked off in 2004, developed by KTM in conjunction with an Australian company called Orbital, and the first running prototype came in 2006. The engine that used the orbital injection system looked good on paper and was very good at lowering emissions and overcoming any problems with the carburetor, but the design was focused almost entirely around emissions and homologation and not rideability. Fuel consumption and performance was average, and the orbital system's high-pressure pump meant completely different engine cases were needed. Plus the pump and associated plumbing made the engine a nightmare to fit into the existing frame without major modifications, something the chassis designers didn't want to borrow. KTM's design team soon realized that the main target ought to be a bike that is rideable and easy and cost-effective to maintain. And they conceded that those targets could not be met with the orbital system. The direct injection system this next generation engine came in 2012, with two injectors positioned laterally and injecting directly into the combustion chamber. It was simple and lightweight and robust, and compared with the orbital system, it used a lower pressure, 3.5 bar, it had much better rideability than the engine with the orbital system. In late 2015, KTM was actually very close to starting production with the die bikes, but the final prototype testing revealed problems they hadn't foreseen. The die system worked pretty well on the 250, but there were difficulties in keeping the piston cool on the 300, which meant reliability suffered. The reliability of the injectors was also questionable. In the end, KTM decided there were too many problems with the die system that they could not properly solve. Transfer Port Injection System With the TPI system, fuel is injected into the barrel's transfer ports via two injectors. By injecting the fuel against the airflow direction in those ports, rather than injecting directly into the combustion chamber, KTM found it created a much better mixing of fuel and air, and a more efficient combustion. The oil still finds its way into the engine's crankcases, but via a 39mm throttle body. The oil is fed at low pressure from a 700ml tank that's mounted under the seat and atomized by the reed block. The TPI system was by far the best solution when it came to meeting KTM's primary design objectives, which were to keep the power characteristics and feel close as possible to the carburetted engines. The orbital and die systems failed to match the carburetted bike's performance in terms of power, feel and sound. You ride a motorcycle because you have a passion for it. And two-stroke fans like the bikes the noise and smell and the way they deliver their power. The orbital system was annoying, like something was wrong with the engine. With the die engine, it was easier for our riders to identify where in the rev range it was too rich or too lean, and that allowed us to optimize the mapping pretty quickly. But the die engine still fell short and not working good like carb bike, and it had bad throttle response. In other words, its overall power character or feel was not so good. Thankfully, the TPI system allowed us to achieve our main objective of keeping the rideability and power characteristics of the TPI models as close as possible to the carbureted engine, while eliminating the disadvantages of the carb engines, such as the need to rejet for different elevations and humidity. The standout thing for me is that the TPI engines are easier to ride everywhere. The TPI power is more tractable and lets you crawl up a hill at very low revs, and yet the engine never feels like it wants to stall. It's more responsive than the carb bikes, especially at lower revs, but it's not too aggressive. Plus there is never any need to rev the engine to clear it out on long downhills, and both the emissions and fuel consumption is reduced by a large amount. Frequently asked questions about two-stroke transfer port injection. 
What are the benefits of new PPI models? Automatic setting for altitude and temperature, so no jetting needed. The two-stroke engine oil mixer does not need pre-mix fuel anymore, more precise engine performance, improved linear power delivery, reduced fuel consumption, there is no waste of fuel like on carburetor. Are the Husqvarna models different from KTM TPI? No, Husqvarna and KTM use the same technology, the same drive engines. Husqvarna comes standard with a switch to change the injection map. Husqvarna also has a different concept of airbox, with which the engine running and fueling remains specific to Husqvarna. Is fuel injection technology maintenance complicated? No, new models are still easy to maintain and have the same service interval as well as previous models with carburetor. With the addition of the system fuel injection on new models, other mechanical components have remained identical as in previous models. So there will be no problems with maintenance, and we use very reliable parts in our bikes. Is the risk of fuel system failure increasing? With the addition of injection system components, the system is definitely something more complex. However, this technology has been tested and tested on the previous four-stroke models, it proved to be very reliable. Was weight increase compared to carburetor 2017 models? Yes, weight increase for 3 kg result is adding components such as fuel pump, oil pump, oil tank, and other electronic. How much is fuel economy savings on injector models? From the conditions and driving style, the savings are about 30% 40%. Is it possible to use a fuel and oil mixture already prepared? No, you will lose lubrication of the crankshaft and bearing crankshaft. Are TPI models approved? Yes, they meet Euro 4 standards. Is KTM the only one with this technology? Luckily not. There is TM Racing. The 2020 TM Racing 300 FI makes 4 more horsepower than its carbureted cousin, and yes at the moment the carbureted models are still available, but it's unclear for how long. This machine is built to comply with EU R04 standards, keeping the bike legal for street use in Europe. The oil tank is located in the right side frame downspar and holds about 23 ounces. This system also uses a separate oil pump. The fuel injection system used on the 2020 TM 300 FI is almost identical to what you see on the KTM and his Barna TPI models. It looks like fuel injected two strokes are the future or at least for manufacturers looking to sell bikes in Europe. The big push behind this technology has nothing to do with performance. The TM 300i was first shown in prototype form at the ICMA show in the winter of 2018. Also in 2017, Sherco has shown its fuel-injected two-stroke engine to the public, this prototype was never completed and put up for sale. Their public response was, we just want to do something that works perfectly, and for us the customer is number one. We don't want to sell unfinished products. Sherco also had similar system like KTM transfer port injection, in future we can expect Sherco also selling two-stroke fuel-injected bikes. Also on the internet there are a lot of people trying to make this technology. Here is one example, I think it's about Yamaha YZ252 stroke. Unfortunately I have no information what happened to the project. Problems with TPI. Oil pump failures. There is a lot of talk about the pump not providing enough oil or completely failing. This is a small issue because I have not seen many failures and the pump rate is more than adequate. But there are some bikes what had oil pump failed. Cracked fuel filters. The 2018 250 and 300 TPI models had quite a few cracked or poorly sealed fuel tank filters. They leaked at the scene where they were glued together. The result was a loss in fuel pressure, should be 50 side, that made them start hard and have lean weak power. The problem is easily diagnosed with a fuel pressure gauge or by looking in the fuel tank. If the filter is leaking, there will be air bubbles in the fuel, and sometimes they spray fuel horizontally across the inside of the tank. Oil tank crack. On the first series of production on almost every bike the oil tank cracked. It happened because one of the brackets was welded not correct and of poor quality plastic used to make tanks. Did you like the video? If so, subscribe to this channel.